That's awesome. Hey, like the video we made, we really want you to come to Fall Retreat. Man, we're excited about it. Some of you guys have already signed up. The deadline is approaching before the price increases. September 1st is the deadline if you want to take advantage of the $20 discount. And then also September 1st, which is next week, is one of my favorite nights here at Greystone. Anybody know what's happening next week? Jersey Jam. That means slam dunk contests, basketball games, stuff like that. Wear your jerseys and come excited. Um, we'll have some prizes and all of that good stuff. Well, tonight, you came for an awesome night. Tonight, we wrap up our series called Promises. You know, promises from God and God's promises to us. And so, real quick before we get started, I'm just gonna ask you once, can you just lock in for a few minutes? Like, let's not talk, let's focus. Because, man, some of us are going through some really tough things. Some of us are going through some exciting things. Um, but wherever we are, we all need Jesus and we all need hope. And what God has put on my heart, what God puts on our hearts for all of us is important. And so with that, I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna jump in to the topic of God's, one of God's promises named the, or called the rainbow. All right, so we're gonna talk about the rainbow, we're gonna talk about all kind of things. So let's pray and then we'll get started. Father God, thank you for your word, thank you for your promises. Unlike people, you do not break your promises to us and your promises are birthed out of love to us. And Lord, I pray that all of us, when we view the rainbow, that we see your promise to us and that we're reminded of the love that you have for us. Um, you never give up on us, you never forsake us and it's all good things. So be with us um, in these next few moments and as we go to small groups, allow it to be beneficial and encouraging to all of our hearts. It's in Jesus' name we do pray, amen. All right, when you talk about the rainbow, what comes to mind right away? What are some things? Skittles, what else? Huh? Lucky charms, I knew it. What else, what are some other things? Huh? Leprechauns, all right. There's a lot of things we think of, and the first thing I think of is taste the rainbow, these Skittles. Now, when I was in middle school, my dad, he loved to have a pack of Skittles and a bottle of Coke. That was his go-to snack, Skittles and Coke. Now, I love my dad, we're really close, but I wasn't really a big fan of the Red Skittles. Any fans of the Red Skittles? Hey, first hand I saw. Oh, gotta be quicker than that. I was more along the lines of blue and purple, all right? Blue and purple, all right? That was mine, the original. I like, I need some flavor, I need some hype. And so, that was that one. Ah, oh. Man, I didn't see that one coming. But when I got to high school, Skittles was my favorite. Now, I don't have a green one, but the green color, the sour ones, those are my favorite. All right, here we go. Oh, you got the hands. All right. Don't worry. Don't worry. Taste the rainbow. I promise you we'll have some more things throughout the night. That's a promise you can count on. But... All of that is like, man, taste the rainbow. And then there's like this community of pride that like they take the rainbow and they say, hey, this is our symbol. And the question I have for all of us, and then when I asked Google, I said, God, or I said, Google, where did the rainbow come from? Google, where did the rainbow come from? When I found, when I looked it up, they said the light hits the water droplets at a certain degree, a certain angle. I think it's 42 degree angle, you will see a rainbow. I was like, wow, cool. Then I also found out in 1978, that's when the pride community took the rainbow and said, hey, this is our symbol. But thankfully, my dad, he taught me about God and I went to church, I came with friends and we learned from the Bible that God created the rainbow. Million dollar question, 
Why did God create the rainbow? Anybody know? All right, Austin. Okay, good answer. So he said, man, and Noah, like God flooded the earth. There was this guy named Noah. And then God said, I'm gonna promise to never flood the earth again. But even before that, the reason why God flooded the earth, why do you think God flooded the earth? Joey. Yes. So, man, the world was off the chain. It was chaotic. It was crazy. People were sinning. And, man, it just got so bad. And so the point is, ever since the beginning of time, ever since God created Adam and Eve, I want to go to the Bible so you can see it. It's not just my thoughts. God created Adam and Eve. He created man and woman. He created male and female. And when they sinned, they disobeyed God's one command. They tried to cancel God, just like the world today is still trying to cancel God. So let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and then we're going to go to Genesis chapter 9 and go from there. But the thing I love about the Bible is I didn't write the Bible, you didn't write the Bible, but we have the opportunity to hear the heartbeat, the words of God, and we get to learn what it is God believes, what God desires, and if we line up with him, man, we get to experience an amazing life. So Genesis chapter 1, verses 20, or verse 27 says this, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So it's not up to me, it's not up for debate. Man, in the very beginning, God created Adam and he created Eve and he created Eve because he said, it's not good for man to be alone. I'm gonna give you a helpmate. And that's why a man and a woman should come together. Yes, to reproduce, but it's God's perfect will. But... As you know, we've all been around church to some degree. They had one command, they had one job, and they failed that one job. And then ever since then, we've been taking things into our own hands. And every time we take things into our own hands, it's called sin. And on your notes, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna give you the second one, and I'm gonna come back to the first one. Sin is the second fill in the blank, and I'm gonna come back and talk to that, all right? But I wanna jump to Genesis chapter nine. Verses, uh, verses 11 through 17. And this is what our friend Austin has shared. We're gonna read a little bit of it and I wanna point out something that I think is vital and it'll give us the answer to the first fill in the blank. And we'll go from there. Genesis chapter nine, verses 11 through 17. It says this, this is what God says. God says, I Establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And then this is when God gets personal with Noah. He says in verse 12, and God said, this is the sign of the covenant or the promise I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting promise between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on earth. All right. This is what I wanna point out that I thought was very encouraging, very shocking, and just, it blew my mind. And it's, 
God was so frustrated with our sin, he was so frustrated with our decision to try to cancel him that he said, you know what? I'ma just let it rain, I'ma let it rain, I'ma let it rain, and I'ma destroy all of life, not just the humans, the animals and everything like that. And God was like, he, he says, he regretted making people. He regretted making mankind. And that's why the flood came. Because our own ability to try to cancel God, our own ability to do things our way. And we said, God, we don't need you. And he said, you know what? I'm gonna save Noah and his family and then two of every animals. Hey, young ladies, y'all wanna teach the lesson? Hey, young girl, you wanna teach the lesson? Then let me speak, please, thank you. Two of every animal, all right? And so when God did that, it flooded the water drained and the earth was just had eight human beings and a whole bunch of animals. And God said to Noah, hey, this is the sign I'm giving you that I'll never do that again. The question I have is, man, you would think people would get it together after that. But right after they get off the boat, right away, man, Noah's sons, they start tripping. They do some foolishness. Then you have Sodom and Gomorrah. They were just off the chain. And it was like, God said, I'm about to destroy that city. And he brought fire down on them. And then it was like story after story of God just going off. But the beautiful thing is, every time he saw the rainbow, he remembered his promise. And that's the point I wanna launch off with today. Because of God's faithfulness to himself, I can trust him to be faithful to me. People will make promises to me. People will make promises to you. People have broken promises to me. People have broken promises to you. But God has never broken a promise. And that is amazing. Just from like over 2,000 years ago, God made a promise. And every day since then, he's kept that promise. He's never broken it. And so if you feel like, man, can I trust God? Can I go all in? Why should I study the promises of God? There is major hope. There is major encouragement in the promises of God. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He said he'll be with us through the thick and the thin. And when we go through the things in our life, we got to be able to hold on to that. So the first point again, because God is faithful to himself, I can trust him to be faithful to me. The second point is house rules. Sin simply means to miss the mark by living life outside the lines of God's playing field. Are we playing the way the game was designed to play, to be played, or are we creating our own rules? Now, I don't know if you're like me. I like to come, I like to compete. Any, anybody else like to compete? All right, what happens when we start losing a little bit? We get upset, thank you, Chris. That's what I'm talking about, real people in church. We get upset and then we start to try to find the loopholes, right? And we start to bend the rules. And then we start to try to play by our way. But the game never seems to go as smoothly as it was designed to go. And the same is true for us. When we try to bend the rules of God, we're like, well, this is the way I feel. This is what I want. Life doesn't work well for us. We, it doesn't go as smoothly as God designed it. Yes, if we bend the rules in the game, we benefit from it, but the people we're playing against, it's not fun, and then you start arguing, and then, man, don't, like if I'm on a basketball court in the park, in the city, and then somebody's like, that's a foul, I'm like, that's not a foul, you know, and bad things start to happen. Jolin knows what I'm talking about, ain't that right, Jolin? Yep. All right, and then we'll just leave it at that. But <laughs> we gotta play by God's rules. We can't do it our own way. And when we do, they're called sin. And so with that, I know another thing I think about when I think about the rainbow are the leprechauns, like people said, but I also think about the pot of gold, right? And I, I didn't know how to get a pot, but I got bags of gold, all right? So we got 100 gold coins in here. My question is, I need 20 individuals to come up front right here, and they're gonna compete for this. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Come on, 21. Yeah, all y'all come up here. All right, they're gonna compete. No, stay down there. Stay, stay right there. Hey, thank you, I love his energy, all right? And so I don't know if you guys been paying attention to what's been happening, but I see these crates all over. And so the crate challenge, anybody, any takers? Any takers? Do you? No, we're not doing that. That's how I'm gonna get fired. I would just, man, you would think I would do that. I am not doing the crate challenge. I know who I can trust. I thought I could trust certain people, but we're gonna have to talk about that. All right, but in this bucket, there are pins, all right? And so each one of you guys up here are gonna take a guess at how many are in here. All right, I do know. And two other people know, all right? So you wanna take your guess and then we're gonna um, take the top 10, and the top 10 are gonna walk away with 10, 10 gold coins, all right? Or $10, <laughs> in other words. All right, so who wants to go first? All right, I saw his hand first. All right, what's your, what's your guess? 36. 36, all right. Stand over there for me. 36, come on. No, right there, right there, right there. Hey, no, all right, what's your number? 36. 53, go stand over there. All right. So we got 36. Yes, please. Um, Dominic said 36. Hezzy said, what's your number? 53. All right. What you got? What you got, Joey? 194 for Joey. Go stand over there with Vanessa. All right, let's go. We got to speed it up. 187. 187. I love 1987. That was a good year. 257. 98. 100. 73. 260. 112. 220. 150. 165. 202. 210. 175. 208. 223. 231, 157. Ben, what do you got? 60. All right, Cam, what you got? 78. All right, all right. So, Miss Vanessa, Miss Vanessa already had the answers. Um, Miss Vanessa, come on, hop up here real quick. All right. So we're gonna do this as process of elimination. All right. If you guessed a double digit number, raise your hand. Double digits. Under 100. Yeah, thank you for the translation. <laughs> All right. Sorry, you didn't lose. I mean, you lost today. You lost today. So have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. All right. If you guessed, we already know. We got your answers right here, Hezzy. You can't lie in church, man. If you guess under 200, raise your hand. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, thank y'all for playing, but you, you can have some. All right. So how many do we have? All right. All right, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, what's the lowest? All right, so real quick, I need three leaders, three leaders to take a guess. All right, I see Sydney Parker. No, yeah, Sydney, you can't. Come on, line in church. Parker can, does Parker know? You know? Ah, I know who I can trust then. All right. Hold on. Does any leader not know that wants to guess? All right, Chris. 
Dan, Doug, and Nicole. All right. Oh, yeah, that's fine. All right, real quick. All right, so three of you guys will, three adults will walk away with some gold coins. All right. No, it's top five and then top three. All right, what is your number? 400. 378. Four hundred three seventy eight three zero one. All right. Yes. All right. If you guessed four hundred, you too far. So, who was? All right. Ah. Uh, all right. So now we're gonna go back to the students. All right. If you guess under two fifteen, raise your hand. Under 215. All right. Thank you for playing. Y'all have a seat. It's so close. We're all, man. I need eight. Yeah. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, under 215. Oh, 220 did it. All right. If you guessed 220, who guessed 220? All right. Who guessed 223? All right. Don't you love the suspense? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, that'd be good. All right, yeah, we're good. Thank you. All right, Miss Vanessa, can you tell everybody what the number was? Can I tell them who's the closest? Yes, you can tell them who to close. Two ninety-eight. All right. All right, Miss Nicole, here you go. They said I like Price is right, dude. Yes. All right, who's next? What was the next? All right. The next closest was three oh one. Three oh one. All right. And then three seventy eight. I know. All right. So y'all can take that. But what was your number? Oh, you're too low, sorry. Good try. All right, what's your number? 231. All right, what's your number? 223. All right, what's your number? 260. Oh man, I might, I might not have enough. No, nah, what's your number? 220, and it? 257. All right. Well, appreciate you guys for playing. Now, real quick, I want to, and let me get your attention real quick because we're going to wrap it up with this, all right? When I, again, when I think about rainbows, I think about a pot of gold. And in life, you and I are always going to be chasing the pot of gold. We're always going to compete. We're always going to want money. We're always going to want certain things. And Jesus' or God's ultimate problem, promise to us was sending his son, Jesus. And so... And point number three is simply this. In this life, there will always be a pot of gold to chase. There will always be something we're trying to long for, our hearts want to go after. And point number four, and the final point, is simply this. The ultimate promise is Jesus Christ. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, so that we no longer have to chase pots of gold, but rather we get to walk with him on paved streets of gold, all right? So instead of chasing gold, God says, hey, if you put your faith in Jesus, if you put your faith in me, you don't have to worry about chasing endless rainbows. You don't have to worry about finding your identity in a rainbow. You can find your identity in me and spend all of eternity with me in heaven. And so, again, I don't wanna make this up or share just my thoughts, I wanna read from God's word what it says. Revelation chapter 21, we started in the first book of the Bible, now we're going to the last book of the Bible. And 
Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4 tells us about a new heaven and a new earth that God has for us. And then it also tells us what this new city will look like. And if you could just lock in for the last five minutes, um, and then we'll dismiss to small groups after this. But please get this. It says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her, for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. That's good news. And then jump down. This is what it will look like, the gates and the city and all of that. It says in verse 9, the foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third Chalcedony, sorry about that. The fourth, emerald. The fifth, ceridonyx. The sixth, carnelian. The seventh, chrysolite. The eighth, beryl. The ninth, topaz. The tenth, chrysophrase. I can't even pronounce that. That's how awesome it is. The eleventh, jacinth. And the twelfth, amethyst. The twelve gates were 12 pearls, each gate made, us, made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of pure gold, like transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, Jesus, are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb it is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. So basically, when you hear people talk about, hey, heaven is paved with streets of gold, there's a new heaven and a new earth coming. But the only way that you and I can live in that kingdom is by giving our total alliance and allegiance to Jesus Christ. We gotta say, hey, he's the Lord of our life. Yes, we sin, yes, we make mess up, but we're asking God to forgive us, we're asking God to renew us and put a right spirit in our hearts. And so if you're willing to do that, man, it's as easy as submitting. The hard part is living it out afterwards. But there's no way you and I can walk out the way God tells us in his word to walk out this life without his help. We come to him first and then he gives us the help. And I just want to end with this final verse, John 3. Most people know John 3, 16. I want to skip down 20 verses to John 3, 36. It says this, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. The application for us is simply this, whenever you and I see the rainbow, we're gonna see it over and over. Some of us might have seen it today, some of us might have seen it this week, but whenever you and I see the rainbow or think about the rainbow, I want all of us to remember God's faithfulness. He's not taking his wrath out on us. He's loving us. He's caring for us. And the bottom line is simply this. He loves you and me more than we think. And to prove it, he put a sign in the sky to prove it. He wanted us to see it. Nobody can touch it. It's never faded. The rainbow is there to say God is with us and he's not going to destroy us if we put our faith in him. All right, let's pray, and then we'll get ready for small groups. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the fun. Thank you for the games. Lord, there are many things in this world trying to erase you from our culture, trying to erase you from our minds. But Lord, we gather here each and every Wednesday. We gather here each and every Sunday. We gather here continually to be encouraged, to be renewed, to be reminded of your truth. We need your light in a dark world as Pastor Jonathan is leading us as in the adult services, we need your help day in and day out. Lord, be with my friends. Help them to come to a place where they say, God, I can't do this on my own. And I trust that you are the only one that can help me. 
Lord, be with all of us as leaders as we go into small groups. Allow it to be a productive time. Allow it to be awesome. Allow us to have fun, but allow us to get something out of it. Be with us um, as we go. We love you. We praise you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, students, stay right here real quick. Leaders, thank you guys for standing here. You can go get to your um, small group room. And then two quick announcements for the students. You might want to listen to this. They both involve money. <laughs>